aspartame is uh, an artificial sweetener, an additive, and it's a chemical. It's not a natural product. It's a chemical. The molecule is made up of three components. Two are amino acids, the so-called building blocks of protein. One is called phenylalanine, which is about 50% of the molecule, and the other is aspartic acid, which is like 40%. The other 10% is a so-called methyl ester, which is as soon as it's it swallowed, becomes free methyl alcohol, methanol, wood alcohol, which is a poison, a real poison. Had I seen the chemical formed on this product, I would never have touched it. You know, the, the poisonous effect of methyl alcohol and, and its methyl esters are, are well known. The G.D. Searle Company, in the quest to get approval for their product, uh, aspartame, they uh, conducted a study on the animals in which they fed some animals, like I said, low dose, medium dose, high dose of the uh, product, and then they used control animals that supposedly did not get any of the product. Uh, when they submitted this to the FDA and the FD, FDA looked at it, there was some question about the study. Well, one of the scientists and neuroscientists looked at some of this and uh, he saw a lot of red flags. He said there's some real questions here about tumors being caused by this product, particularly brain tumors. Uh, so they uh, ordered a study to be done by the Bureau of Foods, uh, which was the precursor to the FDA. And uh, Dr. Jerome Bressler was in charge of this uh, group to, to look through this, the research that had been done by G.D. Searle, and that's what the Bressler reported about. And this is the uh, report here. And basically what it shows is that either a lot of purposeful shenanigans was carried on to get this product approved, or, as he states it, it was the world's worst research. They found that uh, what they did is the animals that died after being fed NutraSweet, they didn't autopsy the animals right away. Uh, some of them were not autopsied more than a year afterwards. And of course the tissues broke down and, and liquefied and so they couldn't do proper studies on them, but they reported it as if they had. And they reported these as normal. Uh, they found that they were taking tumors and cutting them out and throwing them away and saying the animal was normal. Uh, they had animal tissues that had obvious tumors in it that were reported normal. They had, uh, in one of the cases here that's reported, a, a lymph node that was enlarged. And uh, this G.D. Searle pathologist reported it as a normal lymph node. When the scientists from the Bureau of Foods looked at it, uh, they said it was an obvious lymphosarcoma, a highly malignant tumor. When we did our double-blind study here in this hospital, we had really a tragic situation which occurred, which I attributed directly to the aspartame. We needed volunteers. We looked at both patients, that is, people who had a history of mood disorder, and we needed some controls, that is, people without a history of mood disorder. One of the people that I used in the study was uh, the administrator for our psychiatric unit. It was a PhD psychologist. And several days into this study, he had an emergency. He had an ophthalmologic emergency. That is, he had sudden uh, bleeding in his eye and a detachment of his retina. He had to be rushed to Cleveland for emergency surgery. His eye could not be saved. He lost the vision in one eye. At the same time, we had another participant in the study, a nurse, who also had an episode of intraocular bleeding, that is, bleeding within her eye. So we had two people who, during the course of the study, had eye emergencies. Well, an excitotoxin, uh, basically what it does, it's a normal transmitter in the brain. These are chemicals that allow brain cells to communicate. Um, 
but if it's in even a minute over concentration in the brain, it causes the brain cells to become extremely excited. And they become so excited, they'll very quickly burn themselves out and die. So we see people have difficulty thinking. Uh, they feel like they're walking around in a cloud or a fog.